The story begins with the main character in a meeting with the artistic director, who humiliates him and encourages him to sign to terminate his contract. Lenny had his head in the clouds and returning to reality in his office, did not quite understand what his opponent was demanding of him. The artistic director of the talent company, Chance, sitting in the chair opposite him, hands Lenny a contract and says that he will help him become a decent person. Chance admitted that the company originally wanted the guy to give him a chance because of his girlfriend Sarah's good reputation, and now he considers it a mistake. The director warns Lenny not to hope to ruin the newcomer's career and to stay away from the girl, and then sends him away. The main character is very annoyed that a new name has appeared among the performers again and there is no end to this. Chance shouts from behind the door to him to deal with everything himself. Lenny is extremely surprised by what is happening and does not understand at all why he has to endure such treatment of himself again. Despite the fact that he understands that he should not listen to humiliation at all, he wondered who he even was to be treated like this in this company. The events described take place in a world very similar to Earth, but at the same time it is completely different. Space and time are felt differently here, as well as other works of art. Lenny turns out to be a failed singer, and his girlfriend is now the girlfriend of Cell a newcomer to the talent company who has completely replaced him in career and love. Previously, he worked hard, sang in bars, in order to use the money he saved to send his beloved girl Sarah to study at a music academy. But in the end, she left him, removed him completely from her life, and forgot about everything he did for her. Lenny laughs, realizing what a big loser he is, and, resigned to his fate, he finally decides to leave the company and find another job. He decided to start his life over and play by new rules. So he decides that he cannot return to the music industry. Coming out of the office, he sees his ex-girlfriend Sarah and company newcomer Cell walking in the corridor holding hands. He realizes that everything is really over between him and Sarah. The guys see Lenny and discuss how he got into this music company in the first place and are glad that he finally left. They look at the back of Lenny leaving and Cell tells Sarah not to pay attention to him because today, she has to go on stage. The main character leaves the company building when suddenly a girl in a pink business suit appears on his way and says that her name is Luna and she is Sarah's agent. Lenny does not recognize her and asks what business she has with him. She offers him a bag with money and asks him to forget everything that he had with her protege. He was very happy about this gift of fate. Luna was surprised. She thought that the guy would resist. Then she asked him to withdraw from the competition because he didn't even have a ready song. He takes the money but refuses to withdraw from the competition. Luna calls him stubborn and leaves. He asks Cell not to worry about him. Upon returning home, Lenny begins to doubt that he will be able to return to his previous form. Although he believes that he will not miss the chance to go on stage, including to say goodbye to his past life. Remembering a recent conversation with Agent Luna on the street when she called him stubborn, he seizes on this word and confirms her words and calls his song Stubbornness. Lenny takes the stage to the microphone with his guitar and begins performing the song in front of the competition judges. They like the song. They find something in it, although they have never heard it before and they discuss whether he wrote it himself since the lyrics are well written and there is an explosive energy. While Lenny performs the song from the stage, the audience in the hall is pleasantly shocked by what they hear and also wonders how he was able to compose it. At the same time, behind the scenes, director Chance reassures Agent Luna assuring her that there is no need to panic. Only the first two sentences in the song are not bad, and the rest of the lyrics will be nonsense. Lenny sings that if he compromises with himself or lies, he will not be able to forgive himself, that the most beautiful desires are always the craziest, and that he himself determines his place in life. Suddenly, in the middle of the song, Lenny lifts his guitar over his head and smashes it on the stage floor with all his anger. The audience in the audience is shocked. He continues singing the song, leading into a chorus about his stubbornness, telling him to hold on tightly with his hands and never let go. While he sings about the fact that today he has become a madman, the audience is delighted, screaming, filming on their phones and dancing along with the performer on stage. Suddenly, Lenny catches a wave of general joy and jumps straight into the crowd. They pick him up and carry him in their arms. He smiles with happiness. After the end of the song, he returns to the stage to a standing ovation from the audience. They chant his name, and he continues to bow to them. The judge takes the floor, calls him amazing, and also that his singing is full of power and emotion, and that he has not heard such a good song for a long time, and he predicts popularity for it. We see that all the judges have ticked Lenny, thus giving him the opportunity to advance to the next stage. The crowd continues to go wild and ask for an encore of the song. He sat down watching the competition live on his phone and was surprised at how Lenny was able to find this song, 
because only the best producer could write such a song. The judge takes the floor and says that they are all very interested in one question. Is he an independent singer or does he have a contract with a music agency? Lenny honestly answers that until today he was a performer with Star Media, but before going on stage they broke his contract, so he is now an independent artist. The judge is extremely surprised how the company could refuse a singer of such a level. For him it is beyond understanding, and Lenny thanks everyone for their time. The second judge takes the microphone and tells everyone that Star Media is ready to introduce a new singer, so he asks Lenny if they could terminate his contract to support the new artist. Viewers are surprised by what they hear. They do not understand who the agency can promote. While sacrificing such a singer as Lenny, the guy tells the judge that he's not entirely sure about this, and also says that since he has already performed, it's time to clear the stage for the next performer. While the newcomer is about to take the stage, behind the scenes Sarah and Luna think he won't be able to handle the pressure, so maybe they should keep the job between them for now. Sarah sees Lenny leaving the stage and thinks that perhaps it is even worth suspending work between her and Cell for a long time, and thinks that because of Lenny, he will be destroyed. Star Media's general manager's glass falls and breaks. He gets angry and yells at his employees for terminating Lenny's contract and orders Chance to call him. At this time, newcomer Cell finally appears on stage, but the audience does not accept him. They shout in a negative way, not understanding how they could exchange Lenny for him. Sarah sees negative comments from viewers on the phone broadcast and asks the agent to delete all photos and videos of Cell as soon as possible. Lenny goes outside trying to figure out if he's happy, but at least now free, when he suddenly hears Chance screaming his name. Chance offers him a new contract. They have high hopes for him, but Lenny still remembers the caustic words addressed to him. He offers him to increase his salary and become a third-level singer, but Lenny is too easy to refuse such an amount, then Chance suggests discussing it later. Lenny refuses to discuss, and then Chance starts screaming, forcing him to sing according to the contract, because it will be better for him and for everyone else. To which the guy replies that you shouldn't use an imperative tone when you ask for help, before Chance ignored him, and now Lenny doesn't like Chance and he sends him back to where he came from. Lenny stops a taxi and says that he has to go home and finally go to bed, gets into the taxi, and drives away, leaving the director alone on the street. Arriving home, he goes to bed hoping to sleep, but suddenly he hears a sound on the terrace and goes to check who is disturbing his peace. Going out onto the terrace, he sees a charming girl with large breasts in a short dress and with a mask on her face. Then he asks who she is. The girl looks at him and asks him not to pretend that he has lost his memory. Then Lenny finds out that it is Alice, the owner of the building in which he lives. She goes into his apartment, looking around and telling her that he owes her three months rent. She came here every day to find him. Alice claims that she would kick the guy out if it were dirty here. Lenny asks her to wait and pulls out the required amount of money from her bag. The girl wondered where he got so much money from, whether he was going to move, and Lenny replied that now he was unemployed and a free guy. The homeowner is surprised how at such a young age he was left without a job and without a girlfriend. She decided to take the money and asked to contact her if there were problems with work. Lenny suddenly remembers that he was left without work and begins to panic because he doesn't know what to do now. Hearing this, Alice called out to the guy. He wonders if something happened, and she brings him a bag of groceries and invites him to take them, so at least he won't die of hunger. Lenny made himself some soup and was already starting to eat when the phone suddenly rang and it turned out to be Agent Luna. She offered to renew their relationship with Sarah. Luna continued to persuade him, hoping that Sarah was still not indifferent to him, because now Lenny had shown his potential and he was worthy of her. And in return, she would help him develop and apply to the company. The guy continues to eat noodle soup and is not very interested in this offer. Besides, he managed to spend the money from the bag, and in general, he is no longer bound by the contract with them. Luna asks him to grow up and finally say what he thinks, and Lenny believes that if a person is no longer useful to him, then he will not waste his time on him. Sarah was sitting in the car with Luna, and she invites her to talk to the guy herself because he should definitely listen to her. But the girl was very upset by what she heard and asked to go home. After eating and talking, tired Lenny decides to go back to bed. He falls asleep, but soon wakes up, opens his laptop to read the news, and is interrupted by a phone call. The girl on that line wants to talk to him. Lenny apologizes and says that he doesn't want to be a star, but she doesn't force him into anything and just wants to cooperate with him. She thinks that his new song is really good. The hero agrees to meet in person and asks to indicate the meeting place. She sends him a message with the necessary information. Already on the way out of the apartment, 
Lenny runs into Alice, dressed in a short dress. She asks where he is going so late, to which he replies that he is going to meet a friend, and perhaps will earn a little money. She's curious if he's going to negotiate the terms of a new contract or some other improbable deal since he just recently turned down a major contract for the company. Lenny comes to the cafe to meet with Ginny, the director of the entertainment company. She wants to know why he doesn't want to be a star, but Lenny is just used to not standing out. The girl decided to get straight to the point and offered to sell the copyright to the song. Lenny decided to license it instead of selling it. He chooses one of the options she offers and asks to increase the amount. They come to an agreement and hoping for further cooperation, shake hands. The girl hands over the contract. Lenny asks to change the price. She says that the money will be transferred to him the next day and the company will immediately begin selling the song. In addition, Ginny invites him to join her company since they employ not only artists. And if he does not want to be a singer, he can become a producer. The director tries to persuade Lenny to work with her, trying to convince him that singers don't play the main role because the one who controls them is more important. And he definitely likes to hear these words. Ginny says that behind the scenes there is an uncrowned king and his name is the producer. Lenny was excited about this idea and agreed to come to the company to discuss the details. Leaving the cafe, they stop at the entrance. Hearing a street musician singing, the girl predicts great popularity for this song. Returning home, he runs into the landlady and realizes that she is very drunk. She asks him to wait for her and help him take her home. Since they are already in her house, Lenny helps take the elevator to her apartment. She falls asleep and he is forced to look for her keys. After walking Alice into the apartment and putting her to bed, he checks to see if she's okay and if he can go home. She suddenly gets hot. She throws off the blanket and starts vomiting right on the bed. Lenny quickly offers her a bucket and wipes her face from the vomit. He decides to take off the girl's soiled dress, promising not to look at her body. And he also changes the bed bucket and sends everything to the wash. Having put the girl back into a clean bed, he begins to move towards the door, but she plaintively asks him to stay. The guy asks her to rest and goes to his room. Arriving home, Lenny decides to read the news. He receives many enthusiastic comments and does not understand why Star Media denies his dismissal. Tired of all this news, he decides to ignore another call from an unknown caller and instead goes to bed. Waking up, Lenny stretches. Accidentally, his left hand touches someone's leg. And when he opens his eyes, he recognizes Alice and doesn't understand how she ended up here. She shows the keys. The girl irritably tries to find out if he did something to her last night. And Lenny replies that he just took her home and helped her clean up. She apologizes and says that she shouldn't have done it anyway. Asks if he needs help with his work. But Lenny has already made an agreement with the company. Alice goes back to bed. Early in the morning, the hero goes to a new company. He calls Ginny. She comes out, surprised at how early he arrived, asks him to wait while she sorts out the finances, and then she will give him the money. While going up the elevator, she says that the 16th and 17th floors belong to poets, and that in the future, he will also work there. She also clarifies whether he has changed his mind about becoming a star, because with such talent he is guaranteed a happy life, and she will be able to provide him with better conditions. Having risen to the 16th floor, they walk along the corridor of the company office. Ginny shows where Lenny will work if he wants to become a songwriter. While giving a tour, the director said that because of the creative work, they have a flexible schedule and also have a relaxation room and no one will mind if you play games. The main thing is to get the work done. The guy was mostly interested in the monetary component and he asked how the salary was calculated. The answer did not suit him very much. He was surprised at such a small payment. Then Ginny promised that it would not be forever. When five songs make it to the monthly list, he will become a senior composer. If he writes three more classic songs, he will become the king of songs and will receive all royalties from the songs. Lenny signed a cooperation agreement. And after that, Ginny introduced him to his colleagues and also showed him his workplace by the window. He heard his colleagues, two pretty girls, discussing a recent singing competition. They liked Lenny's song and were wondering who wrote it. Suddenly, the girls paid attention to him and tried to understand who he looked like. And Lenny himself was very afraid that he would be exposed and everyone would find out who he really was. The phone displays a call from a representative of the Nation Newcomer competition. They invited Lenny to continue performing as an independent musician, but he refused and dropped the call. He approached Ginny again, and she decided to take him to the meeting room, where the senior composers were storming ideas for new songs. The girls were surprised that he got into the meeting room on the first day. The boss is now very angry and can easily lose his temper. Lenny should keep his mouth shut. They both like the new guy. 
Once in the meeting room, he saw all the senior composers in the company. The boss was shouting loudly due to the lack of a suitable song. Ginny introduces Lenny to the boss. He clarifies whether this is the talented boy and decides to immediately test him. The boss thinks that they are taking this too seriously and decides not to let anyone out until they come up with something practical. Lenny asks his colleague what song they should come up with. It turned out that the song was needed for a new film about love and, although a lot of songs were written, the boss did not like any of them. He is very picky and, most likely, he himself does not know what he wants to hear. Everyone in the boardroom gets to work and starts typing on their computers. Lenny already has an idea for a song and immediately writes down the title. Five minutes later, he closes the laptop and the boss asks, what's the matter? Is it really that he couldn't think of anything and doesn't want to let him out of the room? A colleague advises Lenny to pretend that he is writing or the boss will get angry, but Lenny tells everyone that he is finished. The boss exclaims why he is cheating. It is impossible to write a good song in less than five minutes, but in the end, he allows him to send the song by email and leave the hall. At this time, a meeting takes place in the Star Media boardroom, where manager Louis scolds Chance for failing to bring Lenny into the company. Chance began to make excuses, explaining the termination of the contract with Lenny by the fact that they wanted to promote the newcomer's relationship with Sarah and, in order to avoid problems, he decided to terminate the contract with him. The boss is very angry because due to the fact that their newcomer failed in the competition, and Lenny's song became so popular, the company's rating has dropped noticeably. He orders Sarah to talk to the guy personally and bring him to the company, since they are still quite close. She stands in front of the window in the Star Media office. Luna says that manager Lewis is desperate and asks her to bring Lenny back. At the same time, Sarah is not sure whether Lenny himself wants to return to the company. Luna thinks he will do anything for her. Before, he responded to her requests. Lenny hears from the meeting room how the boss is dissatisfied with the work of the writers. He doesn't like anything from the material sent. Ginny comes into his office. He is dissatisfied. All the songs sent are complete garbage. And he didn't even look at the work of the new guy, because he doubts that he can write something worthwhile in five minutes. Although she agreed that it was too fast, she was still interested in whether it might be a worthwhile song. But he decided to send all the material at once to the director to choose from, and let him figure it out himself. Meanwhile, the director began reading the lyrics of the songs that were sent to him, doubting the mental abilities of the writers and calling them meticulous. His assistant asks him to choose something already, but director Ken explains that the song is the soul of the film, and he hopes that upon hearing this song, people will immediately remember the film. Opening with Lenny's song, Jan is instantly taken on a journey through his high school memories. When he was in love with his charming classmate, the song brings tears to his eyes. The director was very happy to finally find the song he needed for the film. He calls his subordinates to look at the lyrics of the song he chose. They also appreciated the lyrics and called them promising and atmospheric. They agreed that the song was ideal for their project. Jan decided to call the company's office to immediately inform him that he was taking this song. He was sure that it would become a classic of the generation. Vinny sits in his office and smokes, calling his writers a bunch of idiots, and his daughter calls and asks him to come home for dinner. He quickly packs his things, leaves the office and gets into his car, when suddenly he receives a call from director Can. Answering the call, he begins to apologize in advance for the fact that their current work does not meet his requirements at all. Suddenly he abruptly stops the car on the road, because he was very surprised to hear that the director liked one of the songs. Jan wanted to personally thank director Vinny for his work, because without him it was unlikely that such a good song would have been found, and also asked when he would be able to hear the full version. Vinny, with tears of happiness in his eyes, promises to do everything tomorrow and send her right away. Gian apologized for his harsh remarks about his boss. The director finds out which song was chosen. He asks if he is confident in his decision, because it was written in just five minutes. But what is more important to the director is what emotions this song aroused in him. He dials Ginny's number to tell her the news that Lenny's song has been chosen. He wants to know what kind of person Lenny is. Ginny called the guy and told him the good news. But she did not hear any joy from him, to which he stated that he was surprised if Gian had not chosen his song. The girl isn't sure if it's Lenny's arrogance or self-confidence, but she was proud to have picked up such a treasure in his face. Our hero went to the store and picked up a lot of different food, after which he decided to look at his landlady Ginny. The girl was doing yoga. Lenny invited the girl to his place to celebrate her success. She promises to come to him right after the shower. Lenny is preparing for Ginny's arrival when a friend of his ex-girlfriend Sarah is waiting for him on the doorstep. He wonders why she came. 
She reminded him that he himself had invited her earlier. He allows her to enter and pours her a glass of water. She did not think that she would return to this house. When he rented this place, she had already left for the competition. The girl made excuses that she really wanted to help him. But the competition had already begun. She had no other choice. Lenny had already forgotten about everything and decided to give her her old things. He brings in places a wooden carousel in front of her. The girl looks at it with tears in her eyes and decides to wind the toy to hear the melody. She remembers that Lenny gave her a musical carousel for the year of their relationship to commemorate the occasion. These memories make the girl sad. Lenny offers to feed her, but she didn't come here for food. She has a request. The guy anticipates her request and warns that if it comes to returning to Star Media, then she should forget about it. He does not understand why he should return there. Sarah begs Lenny to do this for her one last time, but the guy explained that he doesn't feel anything. The girl thinks that the life he has now is not what they both dreamed of. Lenny asks to be seen as a different person. He is very tired of life. Sarah wonders if this is really what he wants. But before his whole life was built around her, Alice came after her shower and asked to be let into the apartment. Sarah is curious who this girl is. Lenny goes to open the door. Alice senses the smell from behind the door and suggests that the guy consider working as a cook if he suddenly loses his job again. The landlady notices Sarah's presence and, after scrutinizing her rival, asks if she is his girlfriend. Lenny denies this, then sets the table, and Alice happily rubs her hands, saying that she was lucky. Sarah said that it was time for her to leave. Quickly getting up from the table, the ex-girlfriend grabbed her toy in the form of a carousel and left the house of her former lover at the speed of light. Alice thought that she had interrupted them. Lenny objected and suggested they start eating, simultaneously thanking the girl for helping him overcome difficulties. After tasting the prepared dishes, the landlady appreciated her tenant's culinary skills, saying that it tasted better here than in the restaurant. Sarah returns to the car where Luna is waiting for her, who wants to know how everything went, but the girl sadly replies that nothing worked out. Luna expects a scandal from Louis's manager tomorrow, but Sarah thinks only of Alice and becomes furiously jealous. Luna is worried whether Lenny took the opportunity to mock the girl. Sarah can't believe that he wrote this song himself, although he had never done anything outstanding before. Luna understands the girl's feelings and asks her to look at the competition organizer's statement that Lenny refused to further participate in the competition. The agent believes that it's all about the new song, it's good, and if the guy wants to come back, he can take full advantage of this opportunity to get to the top. Sarah decides to try to talk to Lenny again. Luna believes that if they sing a duet, the song will raise her to the peak of popularity. The agent has a plan to get the guy to come back, but she thinks the girl won't want to do it, and she can't force her. Sarah wants to know what she needs to do, and Luna asks him to wait a couple of days when everyone calms down, then he will face problems in the company. She believes that while he is popular, the company wants to get him, but then they will just deal with him, because of his talent alone. Alice complains about the heat, then asks why the air conditioning is turned off, because she could die in this stuffiness. Lenny tells her that the air conditioner has been broken for a long time and everyone can't fix it, while he continues to wash the dishes in the kitchen. The landlady notes that she could solve this problem and would take care of the air conditioner if he told her about it. After all, she is his landlord. She thanks the guy for the food and goes to her place. In the morning, Lenny goes to work by train. He sits in the carriage with his eyes closed and suddenly witnesses a conversation between two girls dressed in office suits. Two girls are discussing a song from a nation's newcomer among themselves. They cannot believe that the author simply left the competition because they liked the song, suspecting something was wrong. Arriving at the office, Lenny runs into his colleague in the office elevator. She wonders if the director Vinny swore a lot in the meeting room. The guy admitted that he was scolded a little. The girl advises the guy not to anger the director. The boss is especially gloomy now, and she is afraid that the guy will be fired. He thanks the girl for the advice. She asks where he studied. Lenny, a little embarrassed, said that he went to high school. The colleague immediately asks again and is surprised at how he was able to get here after school, although he later apologizes for his words. Lenny was not offended by her. He said that he was often absent from school and worked instead, mainly so that his ex could go to music school and then he was expelled. The colleague could not believe what he heard and was very surprised by his words. She thinks that Ginny is his relative. The girl also offered to work together in the future. She was very interested in what was hidden behind his cute face and how he got here. Having finally climbed to the 16th floor, immediately after the doors opened, the guys noticed director Vinny walking back and forth. He was blacker than a cloud. 
Suddenly, Vinny notices Lenny and greets him, but does not notice Julia at all, although she greeted him when leaving the elevator. The hero greets his boss. Vinny puts his hand on his shoulder in a familiar way and invites him to go into the office for a conversation. The girl looks intently at the backs of the leaving men. She wonders what the boss wants from the newcomer and why he is so kind to him. She returns to her workplace and continues to gossip with her friend. They find it all strange. The girls are suspicious of this behavior of the director, and they desperately want to know how a guy from an ordinary high school became a songwriter in their company. Vinny invites his new employee to sit down and also offers him a choice of drinks. He asks for warm water and gets it. The boss assures that he immediately realized that Lenny is an unusual guy. The boss likes the current youth. He considers them good. Then he informs him that his song has been chosen and he will need to record it together with a senior composer. Lenny refuses the help of the composer. He also wants to choose the performer himself. Vinny asks to finish everything as soon as possible. The hero is interested in the profit from the sale of the song. The amount upsets him. He expected more. The boss assures him that he will not let him be offended. Returning to her workplace, Julia immediately inquired about what her boss told him and how good their relationship was. The girl notices a tall man in the office, dressed in a strict business suit, and draws Lenny's attention to him. The guy naturally wonders what's wrong with him. A colleague shares information that this is a senior composer named Channing, and he wrote a song in college and may become the king of songs in the future. Colleague Julia reports that she has a good relationship with Channing and can introduce them, since he is quite cold with others and can ignore a stranger. The composer goes directly to his desk, not allowing Julia to finish her sentence, greets the guy and is glad that he has finally found him. Channing wants to talk to him. Lenny asks him to wait. Julia is curious how he knows the composer. He said that he met him only yesterday in the conference room. The girl is confused and suspects that the guy is hiding something. Lenny finishes work and together with Channing, they go to the reception room. In fact, it turned out that Channing did not want to discuss work at all, but an incident that happened yesterday in the meeting room. He bashfully asked to forget this incident. Lenny remembers what happened yesterday. It turns out that Channing asked to go to the toilet, but the boss did not let him go and told him to keep everything to himself or pee in his pants. Lenny began to think that the composer could not restrain himself and peed in his pants and, barely holding back from laughter, promised not to tell anyone anything because he had already forgotten about everything. Having barely started a conversation about work, director Ginny enters the meeting room, but noticing the guys at the table, she asked if she had disturbed them. Channing was frightened at the sight of the girl and quickly made room for her. She sat down opposite Lenny and asked what they were talking about. Ginny was surprised that the composer decided to talk to him because he is not very sociable. She handed him a list of singers to audition. The auditions of the first singers were terrible until Hunter, a tall young man with glasses, appeared in the studio, who Lenny liked more than the others, and he decided to take him. During the performance of the song, Hunter became emotional and tears were visible on his cheeks. Lenny decided to ask him why he was crying. The guy remembered his love, which refused him. Lenny supported the guy and told him that being bored is completely normal. The main thing is not to forget that it is a thing of the past. Stretching, Ginny said that she had sent the song she had just recorded to director Vinny, and he had most likely already sent it to the director. The director burst into the studio and began to thank Lenny for the work he had done and conveyed words of admiration from director Jan. Ginny asked if Lenny would choose a nickname. He had already chosen a name for himself and explained that he sometimes felt that this world was full of suffering and if he had a choice, he would never come back here. Leaving the studio, Lenny noticed a crowd of his colleagues. Ginny called him to a meeting about the upcoming competition. All employees of the 16th floor entered the meeting room. The senior composers took their places. The rest remained standing. Julia approached Lenny to say hello. He invited her to sit down, but the girl refused, since these places are only for composers. Ginny drew the attention of the people in the hall, offering to start. Standing next to her was a man in a sports jacket. It was the deputy director of the 17th floor, Shannon. He interrupted the girl and asked her to take the floor first. He did not recognize the new employee. Ginny says that this is her newcomer, but he told her that she interrupted him. The deputy calls on him to follow the rules, demands that the guy vacate the chair because they are intended only for senior composers, and he must stand. Lenny apologizes and says that since they are on their floor, he will not follow their rules only when he is with them. Shannon starts yelling at Ginny, asking her to take responsibility for the newbie. He suggests firing him since he doesn't respect his boss and his rules. The girl resists, answering him that since this is not his floor, she is not obliged to obey and accept his offer. The deputy gives up and decides to get down to business. 
Ginny begins to tell the staff about the new season of the Rookie of the Nations competition. She provided information about the singers and invites them to start writing songs. Julia and Channing approach Lenny to voice their concerns about his conflict with Shannon, and also offer to help if he pushes him. Ginny recommends that the guy choose a good singer. He immediately gets down to business. Although he does not understand what this rating of singers means, Julia explains what the rating of performers is based on. It means their popularity in the company and is based on an assessment of their voice and appearance. The best singers are in demand among senior composers and earn more than others. The worst singers earn practically nothing and come to try their luck. Lenny decides to choose a singer with a low rating. Julia assumes that this is due to a conflict with Deputy Shannon, but the guy calls the reason cheapness. He decides to go directly to Ginny. She is surprised by his visit and thinks that he did not understand the rules for selecting singers, but Lenny said that he had finished with the lyrics of the song and was ready to send it. She is very surprised at his speed of work because the meeting ended only half an hour ago, but the guy is glad that he finished early and can now go home. Ginny decided to warn him about the high competition among senior composers, although she has full faith in the guy's songwriting abilities. Lenny admits that he chose a low-level singer. Ginny is very surprised because many refuse fees in order to work with high-level performers, but he decided to take the easier path. His landlady was waiting for him at the entrance to Lenny's apartment. She offers to go to her and cook dinner together. He agrees to help with the cooking, and the girl shows what products she bought, then asks to cook them. The owner of the apartment hopes that the food will be delicious, and also says that a beautiful friend will come to her soon, and she wants to introduce them. Lenny said that he was not very interested in a relationship at the moment. Then she offered him a job with good prospects. Her phone rings. After answering the call, she finds out that her friend has already arrived and advises her to enter the building through the back entrance, because it's safer. Alice goes down the street to meet her friend. She is a very busy and famous girl, and invites her to join her for dinner. Entering the apartment, the guest takes off her disguise from the reporters. Lenny asks them to wait until the dishes are prepared. The girls are puzzled that he did not recognize the guest. The girls sit down at the table, and they like the appearance of the dishes. They start eating and are completely delighted with the food Lenny has prepared. Having come to her senses a little, Alice asks the guy why he didn't even take pictures of such a beautiful guest, her friend. He apologizes for his rudeness and says his name. The friend says her name, Hannah, and suddenly Lenny remembers that he knows this girl. He saw her in a commercial on TV. She is a representative of another talent company. The girls are very full. Alice is jealous of the young people because they have such healthy teeth and an excellent appetite. Lenny thanks the girl and notes that she also looks very young, almost like a schoolgirl. Alice jokes that she still has her school uniform and she offers to wear it. The guy's imagination did everything for them. To hide his embarrassment, Lenny quickly finishes his portion and Hannah hands him a napkin to wipe his hands. The girl suddenly remembers that she heard Lenny's conversation, where he said that he doesn't want to be a star, Alice confirms saying that even if you want to make him a star, he's still against it. Alice reminds Hannah that she asked to find her someone, and she suggests turning her attention to Lenny. The hero is confused and asks what's going on. Then Alice explains that he doesn't need to go into details. All she wants is to find him a good job. Lenny is a little embarrassed and tells the girl that he already has a good job and he doesn't need another one at the moment. Alice takes his reaction as a joke and thinks that he is accusing her of lying but she claims that this is indeed a good opportunity and asks him not to contradict her. The girls are lying on the bed holding hands. Alice asks her friend what she really thinks about the guy. She is sure that he is suitable. Hannah agrees. Early in the morning, Lenny opens the statistics on downloading and listening to his song and tries to calculate how much money he will earn from it. As soon as he sat down at his workplace, Julia immediately approached him with news about the song. It was very popular and everyone was discussing it. She assumes that in fact the author of the song is very sad and she feels sorry for him, but the others still think that Star Media is blind for missing out on such a singer. Lenny categorically disagrees with her and claims that the author of the hit is not sad at all. He can get hundreds of thousands from this song. The girl does not doubt that she is right and thinks that the singer's motive cannot lie only in money and he must be dissatisfied with something. Lenny argues with her and thinks that the reason for his dissatisfaction is precisely the lack of money. But Julia is offended by him and believes that the author of such a song cannot think only about money. She really pissed off her colleague, because it's actually his song, and she's blind for claiming to know so much about the singer, but never noticed that they have the same names. Lenny comes to Ginny's office to discuss the success of his song. 
she did not expect such popularity and regrets that they published it on the last day of the week, then it would definitely have taken first place. He's only interested in when he can finally get his money. Ginny does not understand why he only wants money and not popularity, like other performers, and accuses him of greed. Lenny claims that for a good holiday, he needs good money, because he has his whole life ahead of him, and he just wants to enjoy it. Ginny once again invites him to become a star, because from this he can get a lot of money. She is ready to help. The guy refuses. She regrets that he does not agree, and promises not to bother him with this question anymore. There is chaos at Star Media. The boss takes it out on chance and humiliates him in every possible way for his failure, lamenting that they did not recognize the potential in Lenny earlier. He asks Luna if she can still try to register him, but the girl already tried and was unsuccessful. The director gets very angry about this and hits his deputy on the cheek with all his strength. Chance does not expect such a blow. Saliva flows out of his mouth from such force. A young man comes into Ginny's office and reports that they cannot record the song on time due to the guitarist's illness. Lenny stretches and offers his candidacy. Ginny doesn't mind, but the guy is a little doubtful, even though he invited him to go with him. The guy introduces himself as Tom and asks Lenny if he's new, because he hasn't seen him before, but the hero doesn't want to explain. Tom wants to start with an audition, since the soundtrack is very difficult and it requires seriousness from the guy, and if he copes, he will stay. Entering the office, they see that the rest of the group is playing cards. Tom asks them to stop playing and finally get to work, but they say that they cannot work due to the guitarist's illness. Then Tom decides to present them with his discovery in the person of Lenny, and says that they should hurry up, because the task ahead will not be easy. The guys turn around and look at the newcomer. They doubt his abilities and note that he doesn't look like a guitarist at all. Tom offers to start with a short audition to understand how well he plays, after which he gives the sheet music to look at and warns that only by putting his heart into it can he stay. Even though he was given time to familiarize himself with the materials, Lenny was ready to start right away and everyone was ready to find out what he was all about. The guy picks up a guitar and starts making stunningly beautiful sounds. Everyone is shocked that he was able to perform it so beautifully after just reading the notes. Lenny continues to play, starting to improvise. Tom is delighted with what he hears. He admits that the guy made the song better. Tom comes running to Lenny immediately after the end of the song and he is incredibly happy with the result and praises the guy for playing. The others are interested in whether this is really his first time playing it. Lenny answers positively. Tom continues to admire the newcomer's talent and performance, then asks what music school he graduated from. He replies that he only graduated from high school, which plunges everyone into deep shock. The guys agree that experience is more important than education and also continues to admire his experience in the game. Lenny asked if it needed to be re-recorded, but everyone agreed that it turned out perfect. They also shared that they couldn't do it before because they couldn't invest emotions. But with him, everything worked out. Suddenly an unknown woman flies into the studio with a question about why work on the song is not finished yet. They apologize and talk about the sick guitarist. She continues to scream and make claims. Says that she only cares about the song, and everything else is their problem and also states that they are entirely responsible for delaying the release of the song. It turns out that this woman is the manager of one very popular girl, Gia. She is known mainly for her body. The guys admire her beauty and say that she has found herself a golden composer. Lenny finds out what it means to be above the senior composer, then only the king of songs, becoming which frees you from the need to write songs for people like this girl. The guys decide to do the soundtrack for Gia, because she has very high demands, and she was previously dissatisfied with their work and asked him to try. After receiving the lyrics to the song, Lenny is disgusted by it, but still gives his all during the recording and Tom admires the fact that he can put emotion into absolutely everything. Gia's manager says that those guys who make the soundtrack just don't want to work, calls them worthless and lazy and don't deserve to write a song for a golden composer. In response, the girl shows sympathy for the musicians and asks them to tell them that if they don't succeed, then just finish the work, because there is no need to be angry with them. Her manager agrees and wonders how they could make money for their coexistence, if not for working with them, although their music is nothing without a singer. Suddenly the musicians send a version of the song. Gia decides to listen and realizes that the new guitarist is much better than the previous one. She is delighted with the soundtrack. The manager says that Gia should be ready to record this song and offers to leave a new guitarist. The girl agrees, because such people are rare. They decide to try to get a new guitarist on exclusive terms and prohibit him from working with other players because he suits them so well and can help so much. The manager is in a hurry to convince the young man to join their team. 
She thinks that it will not be difficult, because he can become famous himself by working with them. She flies into the office again in search of a new guitarist. She asks him to contact her later. The musicians are unhappy with this treatment and believe that she is overdoing it and treating them like slaves. Tom asks them to be grateful, because they are paid for the work they love. Ginny liked Lenny's guitar playing, and is upset that he doesn't want to debut. But the guy assures her that there is nothing pathetic about making money. The girl explains their further plan of action. Wait until his song is chosen. She invites him to try to work with a more famous performer. Lenny turns down the opportunity because he's not on a blind date. He doubts she'll share the proceeds from the song with him, so he'd rather not write for her at all. Ginny laments that, having such a talent for writing such magical songs, which are also unique and exquisite, it is sad to realize that he is only interested in money. He will not share her feelings, and as soon as he can earn enough money, she will never see him again. Lenny admits that he will just lie at home. He is not one of those people who is in constant pursuit of fame and fortune. He just wants to buy a comfortable place, live carefree, and never work. During his lunch break, he decides to join Julia. She complains that she spent a lot of effort writing the song and wonders what he thinks about when he composes. During lunch, a famous singer enters the cafe and everyone pays attention to her. Except Lenny. He does not share everyone's delight and continues to eat. Julia says that the singer is working with a famous golden composer. He has every chance of becoming the best in the country. Lenny decides to take another bowl of soup. Julia doesn't understand why he's acting like an old man. When suddenly he bumps into the singer and spills soup on her dress, the girl gets very angry. The golden composer, Ian, comes into the cafe. The girl is upset because of the ruined clothes. Then he asks Lenny what department he is from, and the guy accuses the girl that it is her fault. Everyone around thinks that it's Lenny's fault, and doesn't understand why he contradicts them. Channing reports that he saw the girl bump into the guy herself, asks them to leave, and recommends washing their clothes. Golden composer Yang was surprised by Channing and tried to drive him away, hinting at his professional unsuitability. To avoid conflict, the girl tries to calm the men down, apologizes to Channing, since she did not know that Lenny was his friend. Ian says that he remembers the guy, although he will not argue with him out of respect for his friend, but he will call the director to ask for his dismissal. Lenny doesn't believe his words and strongly doubts that he will be fired because of his words and suggests not even trying. Eyewitnesses of the conflict no longer condemn the guy, but on the contrary, praise him for his arrogance and fearlessness. Julia is very surprised by what is happening. The singer asks what Lenny does at the company. The guy says that he is a recently hired composer. Then the girl assures him that it would be easy for someone like Ian to fire him. The golden composer loses patience and decides to call the director after all, and asks the guy not to blame him when he loses his job. The man dials Vinny's number. He is surprised by the call from such a high-ranking employee. He invites him to dinner. He also makes a request to him, Vinny jokes whether he really wants to go to the 16th floor and offers to discuss everything over dinner. Then Ian begins to talk about the conflict with his subordinate, calling him arrogant and impudent, and asks whether such a person is suitable for the company. Vinny begins to understand who he is talking about and asks to confirm his words. The composer admires his knowledge about his employees and answers the question positively. The director was very angry because the man was meddling in the affairs of someone who was not on his floor and recommended that he see a psychiatrist and asked him not to touch his precious talents. Seriously angry, he demands that his subordinates not make unfounded comments and puts Lenny above him. Ian did not at all expect such a reaction to his words, and everyone around began to suspect that Lenny was not an ordinary person, but someone's relative. The guy suggested calling someone else, and the singer was impressed by the director's attitude towards him. The guy sat down at the table and Julia asked if he was afraid that he had offended the golden composer. But Lenny was sure that he would not do anything to him. Channing believes that Ian is very angry about the whole situation, but the newcomer is sure that the composer will not have a hand in his earnings. The hero believes that it is not his fault, he himself got into trouble and decided to call the director so that he would yell at him. On the way back, Lenny met one of the musicians who would be glad to meet him and wondered if he was aware of what had happened. The musician conveys the agent's request to meet with the new guitarist and decides to immediately dial her number. He immediately handed the phone to Lenny. The woman asked him if he was the person who participated in the recording of today's soundtrack. Gia's manager praised his playing and also said that she decided to give the guy a chance to become the girl's only guitarist and also promised to organize their joint live performance. She called him to come to her office and sign the contract, but Lenny refused and said that he was not interested in this. The woman got angry at his words and asks him to think again, because this is his only chance to stand out. 
She also prophesies for him the fate of a golden composer, but only if he performs well with them in the same group. Many do not even dream of this. Lenny hung up. The musician was surprised by this newcomer's decision and considered him a very interesting character. Vinny goes out to meet the guy and asks if the incident with the unpleasant guy from the 17th floor really hurt him. The director promises to do his best to fight the composer's connections and regrets that he was not there to teach him a lesson. Arriving home, Lenny immediately becomes the object of his landlady's attention. She asks if he remembers about her friend. He can't remember who she's talking about, so Alice offers him a job as Hannah's assistant. Lenny wants to think about this proposal. The girl is surprised and explains about the high competitiveness of this position. She continues to convince the guy, saying that although the work is not difficult, the salary will be high, and the advantage is that a beauty will become a boss. Hearing about the salary, Lenny immediately becomes interested in the position and asks for more details. The girl accuses him of greed, adding that many are ready to work for free with Hannah, but he is only interested in money. Alice invites him to visit and offers to discuss the details over a meal. She bought too much and doesn't want to throw away too much. The girl did not eat very much, arguing that she wanted to lose weight. Since Lenny thought that she did not like his cooking, Alice looks at the guy intently, which makes him doubt. But she just thought that the profession of a food streamer would suit him. She starts doing yoga and in a very sexy pose asks if Lenny is free tomorrow and asks to accompany her on shopping. In the morning, Alice comes to pick up the guy. She is surprised that he got up early on his day off and also feeds him breakfast. While visiting the store, the girl outlines their entire day and suggests going to a restaurant for dinner if Lenny has nothing else to do. While Lenny was trying to remember his affairs, the girl decided everything for him and a call came from Sarah. She offers to sign a contract with her agency again in order to raise the hero's song to the top of the ratings and make him a star. He asks what the actual use of this ranking list is and wants to hang up. Alice decides to go home since Lenny has something urgent to do and asks him to call her when he's finished. Sarah hears the girl's voice and jealousy awakens in her. She wonders what they are planning to do, to which she receives the answer that it is none of her business. Alice asks if it was his little girlfriend who called. Lenny dissuades her by making it clear that they are no longer a couple. She became a little curious about what Sarah is doing now. Lenny doesn't want to talk about it and suggests they go shopping. She rejoices at the guy's sudden change of mood takes his arm and complains that she hasn't gone shopping for a long time. Lenny quickly regrets his offer. He dreams that this shopping will end as soon as possible. The couple enters a men's clothing store and Alice invites him to try on a suit, the cost of which shocks Lenny. She insists on this suit and asks to put it on immediately. The guy is transformed. The sellers assure that the suit suits him perfectly. The landlady decides to pay for these expensive clothes as a gift. But Lenny feels awkward about this. The girl offers to go with her to a party today in exchange for a suit, thereby paying for the gift. Lenny is not happy with the offer and wants to pay for it himself and not go with her. Alice sees on her phone that everyone has already arrived and suggests they go somewhere to eat. A couple in evening dresses stands in front of the entrance to the building and Lenny feels that there is a trap there for him and suggests not to go inside. Alice does not want to back down, promises to pay for all the treats herself and also asks him to be her temporary boyfriend for the evening. At the entrance, they are met by a young man in a gray suit. He asks who Alice came with. She introduces Lenny as her boyfriend. Her friend does not believe in their relationship. The girl begins to get angry and asks him not to interfere in other people's affairs, then drives him away. Entering the restaurant, the couple attracts attention. Everyone is interested in who the young man next to her is. Alice's friends ask Lenny what he can do that he could get such a beauty. The guy decides to play along and makes everyone believe in feelings between them. The girl does not understand what he means. The others talk about Alice's romantic past. Someone starts playing the piano. Those who come turn around at the sound and recognize their former prefect playing for Alice. He explains that he is playing for her and then brings out a bouquet for the girl and apologizes for the mistakes he has made in the past. Alice was angry at her former lover's lack of conscience but Lenny decided to interrupt their conversation and asks him to stop. The pianist began to insult Lenny, calling him a vulgar man, and was also convinced that it was impossible to hide a base soul behind an expensive suit. Lenny believes that playing the piano does not make someone's soul higher, but the man insists that Alice loves piano music. He asks the girl if she really likes it, and after a positive answer, he decides to play his favorite part for her. People around him do not consider Lenny to be competition for a man with 10 years of experience and awards for playing the piano, and they also ask him to stop. Alice also doubts his talent and asks her to play as confidently as possible, but he asks her not to be upset in advance, since he knows how to play a little. 
The ex-boyfriend continues to turn the girl against Lenny, but the girl is tired of his words and asks him to shut up. Lenny sits down at the piano and begins to play a beautiful melody, when suddenly the professor emeritus hears sounds from the corridor and wonders who is playing. After Lenny finishes playing, people in the audience applaud his talent and also admire the feelings he was able to convey. The former is angry that the guy played an unknown melody, but he admits that no one had heard this work until that day. Everyone around admires not only the pianist's talent, but also the hero's composing skills. The professor comes into the hall and wants to know what piece Lenny played now. Then he shares the emotions that arose during his listening. The hero is surprised that the man was able to perceive so well all the feelings that he wanted to convey with his acting. The professor clarified whether Lenny is the author, rejoices that talents do not die out, and also predicts the popularity of the work. A man asks to exchange contacts with a guy. He decided to share not only the number, but also the notes. He doesn't mind sharing this with a piano lover. The professor's grandson was angry at his grandfather's title, but the professor replied that this work was no worse than the historical classics. People in the audience want to know who this elderly man was. They think that he looked high status and admired the piece he played. Eli treats Lenny, praising his performance and promising to reward him when they return home. The couple decided to go home on foot. The girl shared that she thought he couldn't play the piano. He decided that it was because he didn't have an instrument at home. Alice decided to talk about her relationship with her ex-boyfriend Connor. He was the head of her class and followed her everywhere. For her, he was her first love. But one day she saw him leaving the hotel with another woman. Alice knew this girl. They studied together in the same year, although she was not prettier than her. She was from a rich family. Lenny was surprised by what he heard, because Alice was also very rich, and asked how much richer this girl was. The landlady then decided not to tell her classmates that she was from a very wealthy family. She was afraid that madness would begin, but when Connor found out about her wealth, he decided to return and began looking for her, as he hoped that she would give him a house and give him money to start a business. Lenny came to the conclusion that the guy was never able to come to terms with it. Alice confirmed his words, saying that he was still swimming in his dreams. Suddenly the girl stopped abruptly on the embankment, looked intently at the guy, and suddenly kissed him. Alice said that this was the reward she had promised him earlier. Then she thanked him for the evening and ran home to bed. Meanwhile, the professor in his house continued to stubbornly play the piece according to the notes that Lenny gave him. His granddaughter insisted that he finish and go to bed. The man said that with every game he has a new revelation and he has not felt this for many years. Early in the morning, Alice came to Lenny. Then they decided to go for a run in the park and had breakfast together. Suddenly, she remembered that he had promised her to think about the offer to work with her friend Hannah as a personal assistant. Lenny came to the office to talk to Ginny. She thought that he was interested in when the singers would be awarded the pieces for the competition. With some embarrassment, he asked if he could get a second job and still write songs for them. The deputy replied that this is one of the advantages of working for them, because they allow employees to organize their own working hours. She also noted that thanks to his exceptional talent, they cannot prohibit him from taking a second job. The girl asked whether he could cope with such a volume of work. Then Lenny assured her that he would simply work as an assistant for a friend. Ginny was very surprised that the guy chose such a job for himself and asked if it would be a waste of his talent. Lenny convinced her that he was doing this because of the good salary. Ginny was surprised, but agreed to talk with the director and asked not to be late for her main job. She also noted that they make an exception only for a talent like him and asked him to work harder for the benefit of their company. The deputy director changed the topic and said that soon all the songs would be sent to the singers and then they would choose. She also suggested thinking about singers of higher rank, but he did not agree. An hour later, Julia approached Lenny and shared her desire to take on a high-ranking singer, but ultimately decided to go with the second tier. The girl heard her colleagues discussing that all the singers had already arrived and would soon voice their decisions, so they got ready to go to the hall. The guys decided to join. The artist Momo was sitting in the conference room. Her appearance was discussed by everyone around her, and the girl looked very upset. Julia greeted everyone in the hall and decided to explain the selection rules, and that the songs had already been sent to their mailboxes. Low-ranking singer Caesar saw the song sent to him by Lenny. He started auditioning, and was absolutely delighted with it. The singers sitting nearby were not happy with his violent reaction, but it was difficult for the guy to restrain himself. They tried to cool his ardor. Another singer agreed with his colleague's words and shared his experiences that he could not choose the right song. Lenny heard a girl crying on the stairs. He went up to her and handed her a handkerchief, and also asked what happened to her. The low-ranking singer Fenty felt embarrassed, took a handkerchief to wipe her tears, and then thanked the guy. 
Lenny decided to sit down next to her on the steps. The girl warned him that they were dirty, but he resolutely did it. He asked her name and then found out if she was crying because she didn't receive a single song. He asked her why she chose this profession, and it turned out that they had the same reason. Money. Then Lenny decided to invite the girl to write her a song, but split the money in his direction, and also warned her that she would not receive a fee at all. The girl was very upset by what she heard, but the guy was ready to do anything to get his share, and also told her about the need to work hard to earn money with his song. Fenty was very happy and immediately agreed to the adventure, then they went to the office at the guy's desk. Lenny asked the girl to wait for now, he already had a good sketch, and he just had to finish it quickly. Happy Julia ran to the guy to tell him that her song had been chosen, she was very proud of it. She also told Lenny that his song was given to a low-ranking singer, and that the guy should try his luck with singers of a higher level. Lenny doesn't see anything wrong with lower-ranking singers, since many start from the bottom, everyone has a chance to get to the top. This is the only way. Meanwhile, the sound room has received new lyrics for Lenny's song, and sees potential in it. Lenny wants to hurry up to finish everything today, he invites Fenty to rest, look at the text and feel it with all his heart. The newcomer sat down to write background music for his new song. It took him very little time to do it. The musicians really like the guy's new creation. They predict the popularity of the song and think that the track will win the hearts of many people. The guys decided to go in search of a recording studio to record the girl's voice to music. The musicians began to wonder what Lenny was doing after all, since he had recently been their guitarist. Entering the first studio, the guys encounter Ian. He mocks them and also does not allow them to use it. The Golden Composer informs them that lower-ranking singers generally have no priority in recording songs and sends them away. The guys decide to find another studio. Ian laughs at them and suggests they leave the company for good. Gia comes out of the cabin. She asks who came in. They listen to their recording and decide to start distributing it. Ian praises the guitar playing, asks to contact the musician, because he will be useful to them in the future. The girl decides to try her luck in this matter again. Entering the second recording studio, the guys see that it is also occupied. They are not allowed to stay, because they are in the process of work. Momo comes out of the cabin. She is almost finished and invites the composer to come back later with adjustments, asks the guys to stay. He invites the girl to take a break, since she doesn't know how to sing a part of the song. They can finish everything later. They still have time. Momo and her escort leave and leave the guys alone. Fenty is surprised that the entire studio is at their disposal. Lenny calms his singer down, offers to start recording while no one is there, asks her to feel the lyrics with all her heart. Newbie signals to her that he's ready to record. Fenty starts singing his song. Lenny likes what he hears. He tells her that it was quite natural, asks her not to rush. Their goal is to improve every time. Lenny interrupts the recording with an incoming call. On that line they ask if it is him. Lenny recognizes the caller's voice. The hero forgot about Caesar, apologizes to him, and also calls him to come to them in the second recording studio. Lenny applauds Fenty for doing a good job. Then a second singer enters the room and they decide to start recording. Another composer unexpectedly enters the studio and asks to make room for his first rank soloist. The guy calls the man and says that he has found a free studio and also promises to find someone to record his track. He asks to vacate the studio immediately. Lenny invites him to go meet the artist with all honors, since he is her subordinate. He takes this answer with hostility and promises to complain to the company if they don't leave right away. The guy leaves and warns that they will be fired if they are still there when he returns with his performer. Fenty and Caesar are numb with horror. The guys don't want to leave the free studio because no one has the money for a paid recording. Then Lenny decides to do a desperate act and closes the door to the studio from the inside. The guys were very scared. He yells at the guys, decides to record one by one. He is also not ready to pay money to rent a whole studio for them. Caesar insists on the company's rules, but Lenny is sure that he cannot comply with them, especially since there is currently no first-level soloist in the studio. The guy who left is trying to enter the studio. He doesn't understand why the door is closed, and his artist is angry with him because of this. He justifies himself by saying that he gave an ultimatum to those who were already there. Because their rating is significantly lower than his singer, they continue to knock on the door. Caesar finishes his recording. They are happy with the results and are sure that the song will become very popular and asks him to wait for this. Lenny turns to Fenty and asks her to wait outside while he negotiates with Ginny about her and the song. As soon as they leave the studio, they are met by an angry assistant. He asks why they didn't open the door for him and didn't follow the rules of rank. Dismissively, his artist complains that they wasted a lot of his valuable time and threatens consequences for this action. 
Lenny takes full responsibility upon himself, and then introduces himself by someone else's name. He called himself Ian's father, and that all issues should be resolved with him. As soon as they find out who they are talking to, they immediately begin to apologize for their words and offer not to tell him anything about what happened. Lenny continues to lie, but in the end he offers to leave peacefully and not say anything to Ian, since they have already apologized and are leaving. Caesar believed his lie and asks what he should call Lenny now. Then he admits that he made it all up. The guy asks the guys to wait outside the door while he talks to Ginny. He told her about Fenty and clarified whether these songs can be considered entirely his composition. The deputy decides to explain to him why D-rank singers are such, because they have no talent and they have many shortcomings. Lenny does not agree with her. He believes that they are both very talented and promising guys. They hear his words and are very flattered. He still had one question that interested him most, about the copyrights to the company's songs. Ginny informed him that they owned the author's rights, but the company had the right to use them and make money. Use rights are valid for five years, after which extension and compensation are possible. Ginny decided to ask him when exactly he plans to start his new job, but the guy is not yet sure when he will start. She informed him that she had already discussed the issue with the director and he had no objections as long as the company's work was completed on time. Lenny wrote his number and gave it to his singers to contact with any questions, and also asked them to wait for the start of the competition. When he was already leaving, the guys called out his name, and turning around, he saw that they were bowing to him and thanking him for his help. Having reached his desk, Julia immediately approached Lenny. She was very interested in where he had been for so long. She was surprised to learn about the recording studio, because they were occupied by the best singers, and she could not find one free for herself. Lenny said that he was just lucky, but the girl realized that he was lying to her, and assumed that he had quarreled with someone again. The hero decided not to go home, but immediately went to the landlady. She suspected that it was because he was very hungry. But Lenny wanted to discuss her friend's job. He said that he did not need to be on duty at his current job and could go to a second one. Alice decided to drink a glass of water after the sport, and promised that she would inform Hannah, and suggested that they all discuss it together over dinner. The landlady wanted to take a shower and asked the guy to go get some groceries for dinner. She gave him a supermarket membership card. While Alice was taking a bath, she called her friend and invited her to dinner, and also told her that Lenny had agreed to become her assistant. Hannah wasn't sure about her plans for the evening, and decided to check with her manager first. She said that there weren't many plans, and she would sort them out in an hour and a half, and then start getting ready to visit them. Alice was listening to music while lying in the bathroom. She had to go open the door for Lenny, who came from the store and she asked him to start cooking. The girl decided to return to the bath and invited the guy to play games on her computer if he suddenly got bored. An hour later, Alice came out of the shower and immediately recommended that Lenny watch his words, since rude speech is unacceptable at work, but it is worth it. The girl decided to drink a glass of wine while he continued to cook. She would be offended if he lost his job because of rudeness or obscenities. The landlady decided to go out to meet her friend. Upon entering the apartment, she invited her to take off her camouflage outfit. Taking off her sweatshirt and cap, the girl exhaled, while Lenny was already finishing preparing his dishes for dinner. Alice began to praise the guy in the eyes of her friend, because he would be able to help her with cooking, since she has a sensitive stomach. Hannah agreed that his culinary skills were quite good, and she really liked his dishes. Alice added that he could be trusted. Lenny had set the table. He had decided to deep-fry all the dishes and was not entirely sure how they would like some of the food. Alice complained about the size of her rice portion, because she was trying to lose weight, and would have to exercise a lot to burn off all the calories. She decided to spoon some of her rice to Lenny, asking him to help him eat it all. His bowl was already overflowing. Hannah said that she also usually doesn't eat much, and also decided to add some of her rice to her boyfriend, so now he had even more. Seeing how much rice he now had in his bowl, Lenny got upset and hinted that if the man eats a lot, he might also gain weight. Ellis decided to embarrass the hero, because he is already an adult guy. But at the same time, he is afraid of getting fat, so she asked him to eat everything that was given. The guys started eating. The girls really liked it. Ellis was surprised that he could cook not only seafood and Western cuisine. Hannah ate with great pleasure, saying how delicious it was for her, and noticed that suddenly, she had the last piece left. Then, Lenny handed her his overflowing bowl of rice and offered her more. She did not refuse, and took it. In addition to the rice, Hannah also took the rest of the dishes and continued to eat. The guy watched her eat. Having finished dinner, the girls moved to the sofa. They were suffering from overeating and could not believe that they had eaten so much in the end. 
While Lenny was clearing the dishes from the table, Alice decided to start a conversation about the reason for their meeting. About work, she invited the guy to join. Hannah decided to first find out if Lenny understood what personal assistants do in general. He promised to make every effort to fulfill any of her requests. She also added that in general the work is not easy, but you should be prepared for anything. The guy assured her that he could do it. Ellis decided to assure her friend that he would definitely do the job perfectly, adding that he was a wonderful man and cook. And despite his not very toned body, he would be able to protect her. Lenny was shocked by what he heard. Hannah believed her words and said that she was happy with everything, gave the guy her number and asked him to call in the morning. Having heard more about the working conditions and the amount of payment, he immediately agreed. The girl was surprised at such a speed of agreement, but Lenny had already left. Alice assured her that all he wanted to know was the salary, because he was only interested in money, and she thought that he did not know what she did, although she was very popular. Hannah was embarrassed by her praise, then decided that it was late and she had to go home, otherwise the manager would call her. Alice admitted that the girl's manager was starting to annoy her, didn't understand why he should call her, he should respect her personal space, and also thought that he wanted to betray her. We're seeing off a friend. The landlady decided to go not to her house, but to Lenny's. She knocked on his door and called him by name, but he didn't answer. Alice decided to open the door with her key. She thought that Lenny would return to prepare for a new job, because she was the one who found it for him, and did not want him to embarrass himself in front of her friend. The guy came out of the shower and ran into his landlady. He was practically naked, only covering his legs with a towel. He asked what she was doing there, but the girl was amazed by the guy's athletic physique and continued to look at him in fascination. Alice was angry with him, because she knocked for a long time, but he never opened the door for her, and so she decided to go in herself with her own key. The girl decided to leave quickly, finally asking him to be more attentive. Lenny did not understand what was going on, and Alice, walking out the door, immediately stopped, trying to calm down from what she saw. The phone rang. It was Lenny's mother calling. She was worried that her son had not called her for a long time, and she was worried that something had happened to him. He felt ashamed. He replied that he was going to call her now anyway, and in recent days he had been very busy at work. His mother Samantha decided to clarify how his relationship with the famous girl is going, and when they are going to get married. She managed to tell everyone that he was dating a celebrity, but no one believed her, so she asked him to bring her to their place to meet them. The next morning Lenny went to apply for the position of Hannah's assistant and liked his new job. At the entrance, he was immediately warned that any audio or video recording was prohibited. Otherwise, he could be held legally liable. The manager brought him to Hannah. She asked the girl if she was sure that he was suitable for this position. There might be unwanted rumors. The girl assured her that he was exactly what she was looking for, and also that she did not care what other people would say about her. But Kelly's manager was angry with her words. She wondered why this guy was so good and didn't understand why the girl didn't care about the rumors. Lenny said he was a good cook. Hannah confirmed his food was delicious. Kelly was surprised at taking such a big risk just because of his cooking skills. Then Hannah had to tell her that she had already decided that she was hiring him, so it would not be possible to convince her, no matter what she said. Then the manager turned to Lenny and forbade him to think inappropriately about the girl and secretly photograph her, otherwise there would be consequences. Kelly asked Hannah to prepare for the announcement. If the box office of director Can's film was good, then she could benefit from the collaboration. The manager drew attention to the guy and asked him not to stand there like a pillar, but to go to the kitchen and cook something. Lenny asked the girl if she had breakfast, but Hannah replied that she would like to take a shower first. She asked him to cook her cheese sticks and a soft-boiled egg, as well as soy milk and a piece of steak. He agreed and went into the kitchen. After she took a shower, she decided to go into the kitchen. Lenny assured her that everything would be ready in a minute. The girl immediately appreciated the taste of the dishes, but the guy was critical of the taste of the noodles. He believes that it would be tastier if it were not instant. Hannah really liked the cheese sticks. She had not eaten them for a long time. She invited him to join the meal while Kelly was not around. The girl decided to ask a hypothetical question. Would he intervene in a fight to protect her from annoying fans? He asked if she would pay for medical expenses in this case. The girl agreed and promised to add food. He agreed to intervene. The call rang. It was director Can. He offered to meet in person today at the warm-up event for his film. Lenny apologized and said that he was busy and would not be able to come. Also asked the main vocalist to perform his song, and promised to meet him in person in the future. Hannah heard his conversation and asked who he was talking to. Lenny said that it was his business partner. Then she asked him to deal with another matter. They set out in a car for the premiere.
Kelly shared that they had been looking for a song for the film for a long time, and she was sure that it would be a sensation. The manager said that her ward is interested in cooperation, but Hannah does not want to enter into contracts anymore. The girl distracted the guy from his thoughts, since they had already arrived, and also asked him to protect her if someone pestered her. Kelly asked him to stand back and not interfere, and not to reveal who he really was to anyone. They arrived at the central studio, where Hannah was greeted by a huge crowd of people holding signs declaring their love. Lenny was surprised by so many people, and Kelly asked him not to stare, but to just stand and not forget about his responsibilities. They came to the star's lounge. Hannah felt uneasy because of the crowd of people. Kelly decided that it seemed to her, because of the size of the room, and also asked Lenny to go out the door. The girl assured him that there was no need for him to stand outside and also wanted to know when the director would start filming. Kelly went to find out. They were left alone in the room. Lenny looked intently at the girl, which is why she decided that her makeup was ruined. In fact, the guy was very surprised by the fact that Hannah is a celebrity. But she doesn't consider herself one. She just has a lot of fans. At the same time, in another break room, director Can was asking his subordinates if everything was ready, and if the singer had arrived for the title song. His assistant, a little upset, replied that most had already arrived, but they had another problem. The guy explained that they received a last-minute notification that another singer had the same event, which would be held on the same day as theirs. Because of this, the assistant was afraid that they might lose part of the audience. Jan decided to go check it out himself and figure out the problem. Kelly approached the director and said that her ward had already arrived at the scene and was ready to start at any moment. The director went outside and saw that the events were the same. He was angry that they had planned everything so poorly and had not communicated it. Manager Kelly was worried that two presentations in one place at the same time might have a negative impact on their success. Jan hoped not. Meanwhile, Sarah drove up to the place. Her agent Luna encouraged the girl, asked her not to strain too much and was sure that no one would be able to resist her. The girl got out of the car. Everyone around was chanting her name and also praising her beauty. The girl posed for photographers, taking the microphone in her hands. The singer said that she was glad to see everyone and began to thank people for coming, as well as for their love. The assistant director suggested starting the event right away. He was afraid that they risked losing their entire audience. Ken asked Kelly to hurry up Hannah. He really hoped that their action would be successful, so as not to lose all the efforts made on the film. The director informed his assistants to get ready as the film's preview was about to begin. He asked them to ensure that their sound system was connected to external speakers so that everyone could hear the song. Kelly entered the room with the guys and asked the girl to get ready. Since the event would start soon, she looked very stern. She explained her condition by saying that it was because of the singer, Sarah, who had recently become famous, who was signing autographs on the street. Lenny asked if it was the same Sarah. Hannah was surprised and upset that they knew each other, because he did not recognize her when they met. The actress began to mentally prepare for the event. She asked herself to give it her all. Before leaving, they ran into another actor in the film, Hank who planned the main speech and hoped that she would hear this masterpiece. Suddenly, Lenny's hand suddenly flew between Hannah and Hank, who were walking next to each other. He thought that the guy had come too close to the girl. The actor got very angry. His assistant asked if Lenny could compensate for the damage if the guy got hurt and couldn't work. The assistant turned to Kelly, asking if this was their employee and whether he had been taught any manners at all, since he was throwing himself at people. Hannah decided to intervene in the conversation to protect Lenny and said that he was her assistant and should not say anything about him. Hank bumped into a walking musician with a guitar and yelled at him, accusing him of not looking where he was going. He thought he was crazy. The guitarist saw Lenny and addressed him as a teacher, was glad that he decided to come after all, but the hero tried to take the guy away. Hunter thought that Lenny refused to go because he was nervous, but he promised that he would not disappoint him and would perform well. Kelly was outraged that Lenny went somewhere to chat with this guy. He has no idea what is going on around him and wasting his time on a low-ranking singer. She also asked Hannah to keep an eye on her assistant. She thinks that the guitarist wants to get closer to the girl through connections with the assistant. Hannah reassured the manager that Lenny is not that stupid, but Kelly thinks she's misjudging him since they have only recently known each other. Director Can and his two assistants are standing behind the scenes. He asks if everything is ready, and the guys answer in the affirmative. Hannah and Hank approach them with their managers and announce that they are completely ready to go on stage. Suddenly, one of the director's assistants comes running and reports that Sarah has already started singing at her event. He is interested in what she is singing. People became curious about what was happening at the other presentation. 
Many had not yet heard Sarah sing and wanted to see her. Manager Kelly asked the director what they were going to do, but he was not going to give up and went on stage. He began by thanking everyone who came to the event and shared that behind the making of the film was his longing for the old days. He believes that it is students who have the most sincere and pure friendship and love. And it was then that he met his love. He continues, adding that falling in love was easy because then they didn't think about life or work or what they didn't like. Managers, seeing that people were leaving, began to worry that the event would end early and then they would suffer big losses. Lenny didn't understand why everyone was so worried because there were still a lot of people in the hall, but Hannah was afraid that many would simply leave. Then Lenny decided to cheer Hunter up before the performance, asked him to forget about the people and just play the song. He began to refuse because the director asked him to leave as the last one to complete the event, but Lenny thought that it would be too late. He asked to trust him and began to push the guy to go on stage. The others did not understand why he came out so early. Hank's manager doubted that sales would save them, since the event turned out to be an extremely disastrous one, and failures keep coming. The director saw Hunter come on stage and decided to change the plan of the event, and invited people to listen to the song from their film first. People began to be indignant that a musician appeared on stage, and not the actors they were waiting for because they could listen to Sarah's song. He started playing the song. Hannah liked it, but Kelly continued to complain that too many people had already left. People in the audience suddenly began to remember moments from their childhood, they call it touching, and do not understand what is happening. Outside, Sarah's autograph session is going well, Luna is happy that a lot of people came, and the event will be a success this time. Suddenly, people on the street began to listen to the music playing from the hall. They shared their emotions and experiences that they received from this song. People did not understand why this song brought back so many memories from their student days, especially about their falling in love during this period. Then they all decided to go to the film presentation to listen to the song live. And as a result, there was no one left in line to see the singer. Manager Kelly was indignant that at such a difficult moment they called Caesar to correct it, fearing that he would make things worse. Kelly stood next to the actor. She expressed concern about the whole situation and wanted to talk to the director herself. Hank saw potential in the singer, but believes that he himself does not know his own capabilities and should still be banned from performing. Hearing these words, Lenny decided to stand up for the guy and asked them to let him speak to the end. The manager was afraid that Hunter's poor performance would have negative financial consequences for her ward, but Lenny noticed that people began to return. A lot of new people began to come into the back. They sat down in the empty seats. Jan was very happy about this. Hannah and her manager were also surprised by the sudden influx of people. They thought it was because of the song the words came out with a bang. Hank's manager also noticed the crowd. He began urging his charges to get ready to perform in front of them after. Hunter continued to perform on stage as the crowd rejoiced at the incredible emotions they felt and also indulged in nostalgia. One viewer admitted that he really misses his first love. Their parents were against the relationship, since he was from a poor family. Another guy also decided to tell him that he once promised a girl that they would go to the same school, but he didn't keep his promise and now he regrets it. The couple was glad that they met at school and are still together and also decided to invite the class teacher to the wedding. Director Can came on stage to see Hunter and thanked the guy for his amazing performance with a song for his film. The audience continued to scream and asked him to perform again. They were delighted with it. Can asked the guy to say a few words to them. Hunter began by thanking him for the great response, saying that it was the theme song of the movie and that he loved it too. The singer wanted to express his gratitude to one more person, without whom this song would never have existed and he would not have performed. As soon as Lenny realized that the guy wanted to say his name, he quickly hid behind the actor standing in front of him. Hank thought that the singer was referring to them, and so he offered the girl his hand so that they could go on stage together to the screams of the crowd. The audience was delighted to see the stars of the film. They admired the beauty of the girl and confessed their love for her. Hunter turned his attention to Lenny standing alone behind the scenes, but he did not want to attract attention to himself, and shook his head as a signal. The director quickly ran onto the stage and stood in front of the microphone. He decided to introduce the actors of his film, and also asked them to speak. Hannah and Hank approached the microphone. The girl introduced herself to the audience. She admitted that this film was a key event in her career. Her character in the film simply does not like to study. Hannah shared that she also did not particularly like going to school in the past. The director took the singer backstage. He thanked the guy because this success was also his merit. But Hunter was grateful to his teacher. Jan had long wanted to personally find out who the author of the song was, and was upset that he never came to the premiere, and they could not see each other. Luna went into the dressing room where Lenny was sitting. 
She thought that he had changed his mind and came there just to see Sarah. She tried to humiliate the guy by hinting that the success of his song from the competition was fading. But if he took the chance, he would become famous. Luna returned to Sarah's car. She predicted Hunter's popularity as his performance was exceptionally good. The girl did not agree with this. She believes that the song is important, not the singer, and she would like to know who her composer is in order to meet him. Luna suddenly suspected Lenny of the authorship of this song, since she had just met him at an event and thought that it might be him. Sarah refused to believe that he could write two masterpieces in such a short period of time, otherwise he would immediately show them to everyone. The manager agreed with her and promised to find the composer of this song later in order to sign a contract with him or buy the rights to the song. After the end of the event, Can gathered all the actors to thank them for their support and expressed the hope that the collections would be large. The assistants noticed that the success of the event was due to the director himself. He also did a lot for this. The actor's assistant believes that the success of the event depended on the type of thinking of her ward, and she also suggested that he invite Hannah to a business dinner. The guy thanked his colleague for his support. She helped because he was very worried on stage. She believes that he calmed himself down. The actress thinks that the singer deserves most of the praise, as the song he sang was simply amazing. Hunter was embarrassed and admitted that the song was not that difficult. It sounded good thanks to the talent of his teacher, and he only sang it. Hannah agreed that only a very talented person could write such a song, and the guy shared that his teacher is not of this world, and he is not looking for fame. Then Hank suggested that since the guy values the teacher so much, then he probably, in addition to talent, also has extraterrestrial beauty. Hunter took these words as an insult. He asked the actor not to even compare himself with him, otherwise he could undermine his self-esteem. The director approached the singer and asked him to convey his gratitude to the composer. But unfortunately, he himself cannot do this personally. Kelly asked if the author of the song and accordingly Hunter's teacher was already the king of songs or not yet. Although the singer explained that Lenny was not yet a king, he was absolutely sure that he had everything to become one in the future and even more. Hank's assistant doubted that the composer would be able to become the king of songs, but at the same time asked him to convey that if he suddenly wanted, his ward could also sing. Hank also has aspirations to get into the music industry and would like to choose a Lenny song for his debut. The director promised to organize a banquet when the results of the collections were known, reminded them of gratitude, said goodbye to everyone and left. Hank tried to invite Hannah to a restaurant, but was rejected, and when approaching the girl, Lenny pushed him away. He covered his mouth with his hand, then apologized and reminded him that the girl had already refused due to the fact that she was busy and did not have time. The actor was very angry with the guy. He doesn't understand why he behaves this way and why he dares to answer for the girl. Hannah decided to answer these questions herself. She stood up for Lenny and told him that he could do this. Hank was shocked. The actor was offended by the girl's words and since she refused to go with him, he decided to leave them alone and left with his assistant. The girl thanked Lenny for his help and praised him for the correctness of his action. He was happy to serve her because it was his job. Kelly came up. She wanted to persuade the author of the song to write another one for the girl, even though he was busy and it would take some time. She was amazed by his songwriting ability and wanted to know what kind of person he was and how popular his song would be. The three of them got back into the car and went home, since they had no more plans for that day. Arriving home, the girl asked her assistant to order her food at a restaurant, not very spicy, but more meat, lamb and beef, and without cilantro. When the order arrived, Hannah invited the manager to stay and eat, but she still had work to do, so she had to leave. The girl did not delay since she had to go somewhere, and she was not at all against Lenny staying. She invited the guy to sit down, take a plate and help himself, and then asked him to turn on some horror movie on TV. It was already dark outside, so they decided to turn off the lights in the room to make it more convenient to watch the movie, sat down across the table, and began to eat. They were watching a movie and continued to eat, when suddenly the girl looked at Lenny and asked how he was. Lenny clarified whether she was asking about the film or not. The girl was offended that he did not say anything about her. He quickly complimented her, and then the girl forgave him, deciding that he was lucky since he quickly managed to get out of the situation. They continued to eat the ordered dishes while sitting on the sofa in complete darkness. Only the light from the TV screen illuminated the room. After they finished dinner, the girl suggested that Lenny take her driver home after he finished cleaning. On the way out of work, Lenny's phone rang. It was Ginny. She expressed her gratitude to the director and Vinny for the song for the film. The guy expected more than just a thank you from his boss, and Ginny assured him that the director had promised a bonus. She was curious why he was in such a hurry, 
because with such talent as his, it was simply impossible not to earn a lot of money. She also said that the competition for newcomers would begin soon. She warned the director that Lenny had taken two singers under his supervision. At the same time, the girl was afraid that there would be problems with organizing resources, and the team in charge had not yet given their answer. Ginny tried to explain that if it didn't work out, she'd have to put up with the poor performance of his singers, even though Lenny wasn't the problem. She had already showered and gotten dressed. She was curious about how his first day at his new job went. The guy shared with her that the day had been quite stormy, but due to the fact that they pay well there, he doesn't mind it. Just entering the apartment, Lenny heard someone knocking on the door. When he opened it, he saw that the landlady had arrived. She was going to go to the store for a cola, but then she saw that the guy came home and decided to ask if he had some and would share it. Alice immediately attacked the bottle and drank a lot. She sometimes allows herself to drink this not the healthiest drink. Then she decided to find out how his first day at work went. Whether Hannah had bullied him too much, Lenny was happy with everything. Alice reminded the guy that she recommended him for this position and asked him to be conscientious. Otherwise, there would be questions for her. The next day, early in the morning, Lenny woke up and saw that Alice was already in his apartment. He thought that she had never left. The girl thought he was joking. Because she came in different clothes, she invited him to go for a morning jog with her. Lenny was not in the mood. He reminded her that now he has no time, because he works for her friend. Alice was upset. After changing clothes, he went to work on the bus. He heard two girls behind him discussing yesterday's film event. He was flattered that they liked the song, even though they didn't know the name. So they decided to watch the movie and listen to it at the same time. At the entrance to the house, he was met by Kelly. She was clearly in a bad mood and was opposed to him and made a complaint to the guy for being late. Lenny checked the time and didn't understand why he was late if it wasn't even 9 a.m., but the manager continued to stick to her line. When Hannah heard that the assistant had arrived, she looked out the window and asked him to come upstairs and help her clean up. The girl said that today she would need to go to a presentation, and in the evening she would go to a concert and wanted to find out if he would join her. The actress was embarrassed and said that she wouldn't mind if he didn't want to go, but Lenny decided to accompany her anyway. She was delighted and asked the guy to help carry her things to the car, since he decided to go with her. When they went outside, they saw that the manager was talking on the phone with the director. She was happy about the news she received. It turned out that his film had already collected more than a million in one day, which was an excellent result, so he wanted to share it with them. As soon as Lenny heard how much the film earned in a day, he was very surprised and could not believe the news. The phone rang. Lenny went to answer the call. Kelly began to suspect that director Jan called him right after he talked to her. Can admitted to the guy that if it weren't for his song, it's possible that yesterday's entire event would have gone down the drain. Lenny was happy to help with the song. The director continued to admire the guy's composing and writing talent, calling the song excellent. Ken regretted that they could not meet in person, and also said that he had sent the song to a music venue and invited them to a banquet. Lenny didn't really want to agree to the invitation, so he didn't give an exact answer. The girl continued to look at him from afar. The director promised to tell us everything they did later, thanked us again for the song, and also suggested reading reviews of the film, since the song would definitely be mentioned there. Having got into the car, the manager began to ask the guy about the call. She wanted to know if he had talked to Gian. The guy confirmed her fears. She was unpleasant that because of the call to him, the director ended the conversation with her ahead of time, and recommended that she be careful with her words. Kelly once again tried to dissuade Hannah from hiring a guy, recommending her friends, because Lenny might talk nonsense on her behalf. She insisted that a female assistant would be more helpful and less likely to run into rumors. Hannah once again stood up for Lenny, explaining that her friend recommended him, and he is a smart guy, and she sees benefit from him. The manager did not agree with her, but in the end, she had to come to terms with the girl's choice and promised not to ask any more questions. The girl took out her phone and was surprised by the huge number of reviews about the film directed by Can. She began to read them. Kelly also wanted to read the reviews. She was sure that they mainly wrote about the good acting of her ward. When she started reading, she was upset to see that most everyone was writing about the title song, even though it was Hannah who played the main role in it. The manager was angry that people mentioned the song more often than the plot, surprised that the song came out so energetic. The actress believes that the point is not so much the energy of the song, but the fact that many people recognize themselves in its words. Lenny was very scared when he heard that the manager really wanted to meet the author when she had free time. While Hannah was getting her makeup done before the event, Kelly decided to talk to the organizers and ask the girl to prepare for the interview. The girl saw Lenny sitting on the couch and reading something on his phone. She wanted to know if he was bored. 
Suddenly the door to the room opened and a man in a white suit entered. He wanted to see Hannah, but she was not happy with him. The girl asked what Sebastian was doing here. It turned out that he was the organizer of this show, which she did not know about. Suddenly the guy noticed Lenny sitting. He looked at him with a questioning look and asked who he was. The hero introduced himself, but Sebastian wanted to know not the guy's name, but what he did. Then Lenny explained that he was the girl's assistant. He chuckled when he heard that he was just an assistant. He scolded Hannah for deciding to hire a guy and suggested that she pick up a girl for the job. He was afraid that when others found out that her assistant was a man, stupid rumors would spread about it, and this would be dangerous for her reputation. The girl assured that this was her conscious decision and asked him not to worry about it. He just wanted to make a remark. Sebastian turned to Lenny. He asked him to vacate the premises as he wanted to talk to Hannah alone. The assistant immediately tensed, not understanding why he should obey him, since it was not he who paid his salary, but the girl. The man became angry at his words, surprised by his manner of speech, and also asked if he knew who he was talking to. Yawning, Lenny directs his question to him. Then Sebastian replies that he doesn't care who he is. Lenny responds with his own words, asking why then he should care who stands in front of him. Hannah decided to intervene and asked the man not to interfere in the process of preparing for the interview because it would begin soon. He promised to talk to her after the interview, and before leaving the room he turned to Lenny with a threat that he definitely remembered the guy. As soon as Sebastian left, the girl hurried to ask the guy if he was scared, but Lenny didn't understand what he had to be afraid of. The girl was afraid that the man would beat him, but he was sure that people in expensive suits like Sebastian would not get into a fight. Hannah was curious as to why Lenny didn't care who stood in front of him, but Lenny assured him that it was enough for him to know her. He doesn't need to know who is in front of him because he is guided by her facial expression and acts based on this. Immediately after Hannah left the stage, she suggested to her staff that they should go out to eat as they looked hungry. Kelly was happy with how the interview went. She was sure that they would attract attention after it aired and the girl's career would take off. She recommended attending the concert, as there would be big names in the music industry there, and it would be nice to make some connections. Sebastian came out to meet her. He invited the girl to go have lunch and then go to a concert together. The manager was extremely happy to meet the man. She asked the girl to say hello to him then found out that they had already met before. He once again invited her to dinner, and also hinted that it was not so easy to get to the concert, his friends would be there, and he would introduce her to them. Hannah really didn't want to go with him, but the manager convinced her of the need to do it, and she had to agree. She turned to Lenny with a sad expression and asked him to go with her manager, since she was going with someone else. Sebastian turned to the guy with gloating, because he wanted to invite the girl to dinner, and she ended up going with him and Lenny advised him to keep his head down and know his place. Although Kelly admitted that the guy did the right thing by stopping the man earlier, he has good connections, and this should not be forgotten. Lenny decided to ask her what he does, but it turned out that his grandfather is the vice president of the conservatory, and he knows many people. The manager insisted that in the future, Hannah would try to get into the industry, and this requires resources and knowing the right people. Lenny became interested in the man's grandfather. It turned out that he was a world-famous pianist and winner of many awards. Lenny's phone rang. It was his grandfather who had taken the notes from him earlier. The man was glad that he was still remembered. He was going to ask permission to perform his song at an event he was going to perform at that evening. The hero was delighted to hear about such a request, because he wrote this song in order to be played. Otherwise, what is the point of it if it is not possible? While Kelly and Lenny were having lunch in a cafe, he suddenly received a message from Hannah asking him to come to the restaurant where she was now with Sebastian. The man persistently tried to persuade the girl to do something, but she just wanted to attend the concert and nothing else. The girl decided that she needed to rest, but the guy grabbed her hand. Fortunately, Lenny arrived in time and threw his hand away. He urged the girl to think about his proposal, and also promised to deal with Lenny later. In the car, Hannah said that he asked her to have a drink with him today. Otherwise, he would not introduce her to anyone. Kelly believes that he should have agreed and then left under some pretext, because such a chance does not come along every day. She continued to put pressure on the girl, insisting that if she wanted to become a big star in the industry, then she needed good connections. Luna continued to speak, but the girl, without listening to the end, fell asleep sitting in a chair in the car, leaning slightly on the assistant. Sometime later, she woke up. The girl was lost and did not realize that she had fallen asleep. Lenny's shoulder was numb. He was rubbing it. She wondered how long she slept. Lenny assured the girl that they would have time to go somewhere to eat. Hannah asked her assistant to order something to eat nearby since she missed lunch because of Sebastian. Lenny suggested they go and buy something. It would be faster than waiting for delivery. 
the actress decided to change clothes for now. The girl began preparations, and he went to the store for groceries. Approaching the car, he drank water from a bottle. Hannah opened the door and walked out in a classic evening dress, and Lenny choked on his drink in surprise. Trying to clear his throat in surprise, he placed bags of food on the table in front of the girl and invited her to eat quickly. While she was having lunch, they heard Kelly and Sebastian, who had just arrived, talking outside, discussing how to get to the concert venue. Kelly didn't know that the girl had already woken up. She noted that Hannah was very tired and fell asleep as soon as she got into the car. The guy decided to wait for her. Hearing their conversation, Hannah got out of the car to meet them. Sebastian was surprised that she had already woken up. The girl told him that she had just gotten up and had a snack, and also assured them that she was going to get to the concert venue on her own. The man tried to persuade her to go with him, because perhaps she didn't know the way, and it would be a shame to miss the concert because of this, and he was also afraid that she wouldn't be allowed into the hall without him. Hannah took her assistant's arm and asked him to take him with them. If Sebastian didn't mind, the guy would have to carry her things. Without much enthusiasm, but still the man agreed to take Lenny, just another person in addition to them. Since he had no other choice, he had to calm down, and in the end he suggested that they go on the road to the concert. Kelly approached Lenny and asked him to keep an eye on Hannah, and if something happened, to call her right away. Sebastian walked up to the car and opened the door. He invited the actress to sit down and hoped that she would do just that. But Lenny himself decided to help the girl get into the car, after which he began to hurry Sebastian, who was angry with him for his dismissive tone. The assistant calmly reminded the man that this was his car, and he himself volunteered to give them a ride to the concert venue. He began to get even angrier, then Hannah intervened and also asked him to hurry up. They were really late. As soon as they arrived at the right place, Sebastian immediately invited the girl to take her inside. He then turned to Lenny and ordered him to stay there and watch his car, and if he couldn't handle it, he would be left without a tip. Lenny got out of the car with them, but did not look after them. He took out his phone and looked at something in it with enthusiasm. Suddenly someone approached the guy, a girl in a green dress and surrounded by men in suits trying to understand whether the person in front of her was the same. It was Nina, the granddaughter of the composer. Her friends asked her questions about the guy. They could not understand why he was dressed so informally. Lenny did not expect to see her. He thought it was a coincidence. But the girl believed that he had come to the concert on purpose and invited him to go together. The guy embarrassedly admitted that he did not have a ticket. Nina assured him that if he went with her, they would definitely let him through. Sensing that the guy didn't really want to go, she shared with him that her grandfather would be very happy to know that he had come. They headed towards the exit. The men walking behind were discussing Lenny. They did not recognize him and consider him not a very important person in the industry, despite the fact that he knows Nina. Entering the hall, the girl invited him to take any free seat in the front row while she was backstage. She invited him to join, but Lenny refused. Then she allowed him to invite his friends to sit with them in the front row. The girl handed over a small, crumpled piece of paper. The guy would need it in case anyone asked him for a ticket. Nina once again invited the hero to go with her, but Lenny decided that he would be a little uncomfortable there. Sebastian and Hannah had already taken their seats. He explained to the girl that all the gathered guests were big people in the industry, and if he was lucky, he would introduce her to them. He noticed that professors from music schools were sitting in the front row, and that he was only able to get tickets thanks to his connections. Lenny walked past them. They noticed each other and Sebastian got very angry that the guy went inside without permission. He accused the guy of illegally entering the concert and also tried to explain that just anyone is not allowed there. Lenny shared that he didn't really want to come to this concert, but now he had to go to the front row. He then turned to his boss and invited her to come with him to the front row. Sebastian tensed, waiting for her answer. He had no idea how Lenny got in, but he insisted that people like him were definitely not seated in the front row. The girl agreed to go with him without any doubt. She had already gotten up when the man advised her not to go with him because it was stupid. Sebastian tried to convince them that they don't just sit in the front row and the security is strict. Their tickets will definitely be checked, and eventually a scandal will start, and they will be kicked out. The girl followed Lenny. She decided to check with him whether she would be kicked out if she went with him. He assured that no. The girl looked at him with an innocent look. She decided to trust her assistant, and they went to take their seats. Sebastian decided to cause problems for the couple. He called the security guards and pointed at the guy, saying that he did not have a ticket and wanted to disrupt the concert. He asked them to identify the intruder and throw him out of the event, and he also drew their attention to his simple clothes. The security listened to his words, and they decided to check the ticket from Lenny. Sebastian gloated and wanted to know how the guy would get out of the situation. 
Hannah was very surprised that they sat in the front row. She wanted to know if they were really allowed to sit there. Security approached the couple and asked Lenny to show him his ticket or invitation to the front row. The guy handed them the piece of paper that Nina had given him earlier. The men immediately apologized and bowed, wishing them a good time.